And we've got, uh, we've got a friend of us, uh, a lovely... They're, they're explicit sexual stories, basically. Yeah. Probably written by the male writers. No, no, they're not. They're written by girls. <laughs> no, they're not. They fucking are. The next... The, that's why we've got her in. Oh. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I do plan these fucking nights, you know. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, can we please have a massive round of applause for our very special guest, Sexy, sexy Stacy. Big round of applause for her. Oh, oh, oh Jesus God. Stacy, um, hi, how are you doing? Um, I'm all right. Yeah, you're okay, yeah. It's a girl, Lee, look, it's a girl. Okay, uh, please uh, have a seat, Stacy. It's a fucking girl. It's a fucking girl. Um, right, so, um, Stacy, um, you probably get this a lot, but you're, um, you're really fit. <laughs> I'd, I'd pop you in a bun and eat you. <laughs> I'd stick you in a cob. Oh, thanks, Lex. <laughs> well, then we got girlfriends with that line. That's killer. Oh, sorry. Um, so, um, Stacey, um, you're going to read um, one of your sexy ladies' confessions to us tonight, aren't you? Um, is, is, is that um? I can't really talk to her. <laughs> is, is the, yeah, are you happy to do that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, a hushed sexual silence for the lovely, lovely Stacey and her confession. Right, well, um, I've been to uh, this great party, right, oh. and I, I made it mine down, I thought, and I'd had a few too many yoga bombs, and ended up, like, passed out uh, upstairs, right? So I get up in the middle of the night, and I'm like, I've finished, so I go downstairs to make a toaster, yeah? And um, when I got to the kitchen, I discovered that my, my friend's cute boyfriend, he popped downstairs to get a glass of water as well. Huh? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we, we exchanged greetings, uh, but it was obvious that something else was going on, you know? So as I got on with uh, making my sandwich, the tension became unbearable. I was about to ask him, how his night had been when I noticed a huge bulge in his boxer shorts. I realised that I was wearing nothing but my tiny little frilly pants and a see-through vest. Blood rushed into my face. Clearly, all of his was going in the opposite direction, though. <laughs> now, he took a step towards me and he, he started stroking my shoulder. My best mate's boyfriend. And maybe it was all the drink that I'd taken on board, but uh, I leaned straight in for a kiss. But just as we was about to meet, in a passionate tongue embrace, he slipped on the greasy kitchen floor and cracked his head on a kitchen unit. <laughs> he was totally still, and I watched a dark patch of blood creep out from under the back of his head. There was a gasp from the doorway, and there was my mate, looking dumbstruck at a stricken fella. What the fuck have you done to him, you slag? She shrieked at me. Before I could explain, she flew at me, her shell out nails tearing into my flesh. As I gurgled horrific pleas and excuses, I started to feel faint and, and I realised that I would have to defend myself, that, that this was it. It was me or her. So I reached for the nearest kitchen utensil. It was a whisk. <laughs> Do you know how hard it is to render somebody unconscious with a whisk? <laughs> They're quite flimsy. I, I, had, I had to smash it again and again and again and again and again and again and again. Stace, <laughs> Stace, yeah? um, it, I, I, it, do you know you keep saying again and again and miming bludgeoning someone with a whisk? Oh, sorry, what am I like? <laughs> don't, anyway, uh, don't, don't, don't um, anymore. No, 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 I'll, I'll carry on. Right, so after what seemed like, you know, ten minutes of endless bludgeoning, I realised that she wasn't going to stop. And then I smelt the melting cheese. I knew it was my only hope. I gave my last burst of energy to shove her face into the toasty maker. She screamed in agony, but suddenly released her grip and slumped to the ground. Relief turned to panic as I realised that I had breveled my mate to death. <laughs> and that I was now stuck with two dead bodies and a blood spattered whisk with my fingerprints all over it. Thinking quickly, I slipped out of the open kitchen window down into the garden where I hid the murder weapon in next door's shed. Then I phoned the cops and pretended I'd found them like that. Sometimes at night, 
I can still hear the screaming, smell the burning flesh. Her beautiful blonde hair melted into the cheese. <laughs> no, Stacy! What are you doing? No more extensions! I only had a day last week! Little red spots. <laughs> Little red spots on my face in the mirror. <laughs> and cheese. Oh, thanks, Les. It was great to get that off your chest. Chest? I mean... <laughs> That's, that's not usually the kind of ladies' confessions we have on, you know what I mean? That was a bit, oh. a bit much. Oh yeah, and I gave the policeman a blurry as well. Oh wow, top bird! <laughs> top bird! Oh.